Retinal vein occlusion is one of the common causes of visual impairment. The occlusion in BRVO commonly occurs at arteriovenous crossing, whereas in CRVO, it typically occurs at the lamina cribrosa. There have been several attempts to treat this disease surgically. Current available treatments, including sheathotomy, endovascular tissue plasminogen activator, TPA, injection, and radio-optic neurotomy have their limitations. Sheathotomy, a surgical decompression of the AV crossing, seemed promising, but it has shown limited effect. Micropipettes, or microneedles, have been used to directly inject TPA into the central retinal vein. These treatment modalities have been unsuccessful in the physical removal of the thrombi. Therefore, we developed a new device for the treatment of BRVO. Our device combines a 23-gauge instrument with a 37-gauge needle. By sliding this projection, a wire made of the shape memory alloy, nitinol, is thrusted out of the 37-gauge needle. This is an image of the tip of the needle as observed by scanning electron microscopy. The angle of the cutting plane of the needle from the axis is 30 degrees, and the tip is sharp enough to pierce the vessel wall. The internal wire has a smooth surface with a dull edge that prevents damage to the endothelial layer of the vessel wall. This is an animation demonstrating the process of clot removal using this instrument. The 37-gauge needle pierces the vessel wall, making the cutting plane entirely inside the vessel. Then, the internal wire is pushed toward the clot, where it chips the clot off the vessel wall. Finally, the blood flow is restored. We tested this device in an enucleated porcine eye. We placed two 25-gauge port trocars and performed another sclerotomy using a 23-gauge V-lance. The device was inserted through the 23-gauge sclerotomy site. The tip of the 37-gauge needle approached the vein and pierced it with a slight resistance. Next, the surgeon held the instrument in a firm grip, making sure not to make any significant movement, and then projected the internal wire into the vein by sliding the projection on the side of the grip. The internal wire was elongated and advanced toward the optic disc without any distortion of the vein during the procedure. Once again, when the needle pierces the vein, the vessel, including the surrounding retina, is not distorted, indicating that the resistance is small. And the internal wire advances smoothly and seems not to damage the vessel. The image taken by light microscope shows that the endothelial layer of the retinal vessel was not damaged. We tested the device for its efficacy in the branch and central retinal veins in 20 enucleated porcine eyes for each vein type. The needle pierced the vein at a distance of four disc diameters from the disc in the BRV group and at one disc diameter in the CRV group. The internal wire was cannulated toward the disc and particularly in the CRV group, the surgeon attempted to guide the wire into the central retinal vein of the optic disc. The success rates of the needle piercing and cannulation of the internal wire were evaluated. The success rate of needle piercing was high in both groups whereas the success rate of cannulation was high in BRV group. 
However, the wire could not reach the central retinal vein in the optic disc in the CRV group. Therefore, the device is currently undergoing further improvements for future use in CRVO. We have introduced a new device for removing thrombi in retinal vessels. We hope this instrument will become a treatment modality for BRVO.